Welcome to Free Media, I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, as we approach the election, it's just 12 days away, it's not only the candidates under the microscope, but also the way the media chooses to frame them. This past weekend, both Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump were out trying to win over the undecided voters. Harris, campaigning alongside Liz Cheney, of all people, seems to be trying to court the Never Trump wing of the GOP. We'll get into the Harris-Cheney alliance in a little bit. Meanwhile, former President Trump was in Pennsylvania, a critical battleground state, where he made headlines for working a shift at McDonald's. Here's how CBS News' Nora O'Donnell chose to cover his stint at the Golden Arches. Yes, election day is just over two weeks away, and the fight for every single last undecided vote in battleground states is intensifying. Vice President Kamala Harris is targeting disaffected Republican voters by hitting the trail with Liz Cheney in the crucial blue wall states of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Cheney was a powerful Republican congresswoman, and today she called Harris a responsible adult. As for former President Donald Trump, he was back in North Carolina again, pushing false claims about FEMA and immigrants. That's after he spent the weekend slinging a crude insult at Harris, engaging in lewd locker room talk about the late golfing legend Arnold Palmer and staging a campaign stunt at a Pennsylvania McDonald's. And now here's a clip of Trump actually behind the counter at McDonald's. But I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again. Thank you. Look at oh, that. Mr. Look at that. Oh, How are you? Thank you, Mr. President. Nice to see you. You made it possible for ordinary people like us to meet uh, you. You're not ordinary. I mean, thank you, you so much. You are not ordinary. I can see. We pray for you. Uh, and, you. and you are the type of person we want to be the president. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So nice. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, I took a bullet. That's right. Thank you, Mr. President. When you think about it, I guess that's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, look. I think it was clearly, uh, you know, a campaign photo op gimmick type thing, but one that was effective and one that is very common among political figures. You know, the freak out from people like Ron Filipkowski, you know, Fluanon type uh, anti-Trump Twitter account, being you know, like, it's, it wasn't real. The, the people were pre screened Well, yeah, of course they were. That's how these things always work. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you can compare this to any time any campaign stops in a restaurant. They don't just walk in the front door and surprise everybody. There's obviously a security yeah. Spoiler suite. for those who I know, who sorry to, yeah. to take the veil off of the, the mystery, <laughs> but they pre-screen with the security sweep. They make sure all the people inside are okay to be there. And they give, the, of course, the restaurant a heads up. It's all a scripted sort of event in many ways. I mean, Tim Walls did this opening day pheasant hunt where he couldn't even load a shotgun. And between, mm -hmm. I think they had like a dozen people out and they came home with one pheasant, which mm -hmm. we don't even get a picture of. I mean, that's just, they do this stage Maybe events, Maybe the pheasants right? were following enforced social distancing rules. Yeah, that's probably what probably. it was. Yeah. Um, but it was amazing to see just the meltdown over this specific stint at McDonald's. Newsweek actually ran a headline where they decided to attack the small business owners of this franchise location in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, by pointing out that they had once failed a health inspection. So I guess now they're trying to cancel the owners of a McDonald's because they didn't like that Trump was there. It's Yeah, it's McDonald's nice. put out, I thought, a very carefully crafted statement saying we are not political and we appreciate both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris's enthusiasm for our food. Thank you, that's cool. It was clearly, carefully thought through to offend no one, which is really what you should be trying to do. Like, I don't want my brands or businesses to be exclusively political. I want them to just try to stay out of politics as they can. And that was a well handled by them. Yeah, I agree. I thought they did a good job. And then there was, of course, the little statement in there about how they don't have employment records from the early 80s. So please <laughs> stop asking us because... Yeah, look, I accept that maybe she was... So she's made this claim that she worked there. And, uh, you know, pe pe Donald Trump says he doesn't believe it. Um, if she says it, I don't have any specific reason to disbelieve her. There's no contemporary... There's no evidence to demonstrate that she did. Uh, but it, it's weird how the media covers it, like, without evidence, they're asserting that she didn't work there. Well, but she's asserted without evidence that she did work there. There's no evidence either way. Again, I don't, it doesn't, who cares also? And if she says she did, then she did, unless you can bring up some specific reason she didn't. But it, it's a little weird, the media, where the media insists that it is 
proven beyond some reasonable doubt. There's just no, it's just a claim that we can't verify, oh well. Yeah, and there have been several indications that she might not have worked there. I mean, the Free Beacon did this report mm -hmm. where they found this uh, this application for a job that she was applying to very early on in her career where she was supposed to list every place of employment that she had ever been at. I guess it was because there was some sort of national security screening or something mm. to that effect, and she did not put McDonald's on there. And then she's, yeah. I guess, incapable of remembering which McDonald's it was I mean, that she I, actually worked yeah, at. Yeah, I mean, I guess I wouldn't put, you know, if I was li if I was applying for a new job or something, they asked me why my previous well, jobs so are. I worked at, I did door knocked for Comcast a million years ago. I would normally summer, agree, I but it was explicitly on the application that you had to list every place mm -hmm. of prior employment for some kind of screening purposes. So in that sense, it was different than your standard, like, okay, I'm going to leave off experience right. that's not relevant to right. the job I'm applying for. Right. But is it relevant to the job of being the President of the United States? I guess that's something the voters will decide on. More free media right after this.